Um, so Susan, are you ready to start? I saw that you joined on. I'm not sure if she's here yet. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay, so I shall begin. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll just do this. Okay, so we're going to have fun, learn about nature journaling. And nature journaling is a way in which students can really begin to have uh, engagement with their environment. What I like to do is, first of all, talk about the way we learned about um, uh, oh damn, what in the way? Just, I can't take the call because I'm in class. Okay. Yeah, I said I'm. I said I can't. Well. Okay. Sorry. Please excuse me. Um, how we learn some things historically and prehistorically about this landscape from um, from history. There were, as, as Ken was talking about, um, Henry L., who was uh, an artist with the Emmons Exploring Party in 1841, but there were others. There was um, the artist uh, Thomas Agate in the um, Wilkes Expedition, and of course, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And we learned about not only the flora and and fauna of the area from David Douglas's sketches and so on, but we also learned about, um, you know, the sketches of the earliest people, the Umqua and the Kalapuya in our area. There are things that are written just easily accessible in newspaper articles that can be accessed online that tell us not only historical facts that were found, um, through these artists who were journaling on these early expeditions, but also things that, about the landscape today that are changing, like bringing back the wolves into the Empois. That was, uh, that there's a whole history of cultural landscape use just in the fact that we have um, wolves now in, the, in our landscape. So, I like to talk to kids about knowing where we are. I like to incorporate sometimes words from Chinook jargon, which was the trading language between the Indians and the settlers. And um, like Ilhi is a word for home, but it means land. And um, words that we can approach, uh, Yuqua is another Chinook jargon mean, word that means here, here. And umqua, some think, that word, in, uh, some nomenclatures believe that it means uh, thundering waters, but others think that it was indeed the um, feeling of satisfaction in your stomach once you ate the, the, um, the camas that, um, that grows here. So there's always opportunities to learn about different ways of exp expressing um, those aspects of our environment. I'm going to show you now some examples of nature journals. Nature journals are published. Some are, some are published. Show those. Here's some examples. And some are not published. Here's one that I'm working on. This is my latest. I make these. This was my first one several years ago. And you can glue things in. This fell into the water when I was canoeing. So it's kind of rumply, but I kind of like the effect. And this one has a bird's feather, little woodpecker feather. And, and this is when I was staying at the Klamath. 
and documenting what I was seeing and finding out the name of the plant and so on. And then here's back home and what, um, when we can do these kinds of, this is a blackberry leaf, of course. Interesting how pretty it is. Because, and then this one, so, it, and this one. So there's lots of nature journaling and making the nature journals. Um, making the nature journals are simple. There's a, a simple, simple way, simple one, and that would be more like this. This one here. This is a, a journal that you just use construction paper and drawing paper. It's good to use drawing paper instead of copy paper because when you're doing watercolor, for instance, it, it holds up much better. And if you're using ink pen, you know, always, always experiment and see what pen will not bleed through or what watercolor will not bleed through. And drawing paper, a pretty good drawing paper will, will hold up. Anyway, cut five or 10 pieces, fold them, fold the, the um, construction paper, and then along the ridge, along the ridge here, get a board and a little hammer and a nail and tap holes through the paper, through the drawing paper and the construction paper, and then use thread like this or this, just, just simple twine. It's always good to use one of those big headed needles and just go through. And you can do it along the spine or like this one. This one, the holes are here and the twine goes over and on this, on these, you can see it's twined totally along the spine. I prefer this because this you lose I mean, it, it ha when you open it, it has this, say, and you lose some uh, amount of space. But when you do end up with a long string at the end, you can cut that off, tie it off up here, or you can put a leaf or a feather or some little trinket that they've found out in nature stick or something that they like. And that can serve as a, as a, as a bookmark for your. And showing students how to um, enter the journal. Oh, but I did want to talk to you a little bit more about coverings for journals. In this journal, I have used um, a handmade paper. And then on this one, I found a little maple leaf and painted it and then put it in here, on here. It transferred the paint onto here. So then I could use, oh, a paintbrush and just paint green in here a little bit. Another thing that I have done is used, you know those styrofoam, Janice was talking about all the junk that we have come into our lives from products that we buy. Well, that those styrofoam plates that have chicken and fish and stuff on them. Well, I clean those up and I cut them into squares like that with a pencil that is not that sharp. You draw, this is a drawing on that styrofoam sheet of Dodecathion, which is the bird bill or shooting star, it's a wildflower. And you can show students what they look like if you don't have examples easily enough on your big screen on the, in this classroom. You can Google uh, Dodecathion, you know, and the, and the Northwest Oregon species. Show them so they can draw this. And here's all the lines for the drawing. And then you can show them maybe some other lines of the the grasses behind them so that this becomes kind of a, a nice play between the white line and the green. Then you take uh, acrylic paint 
and a paintbrush and water and paper towel and just paint quickly the pink in here the yellow here on your styrofoam block so this becomes a printing a block print and when it's all painted and you don't take much time you want to go over it quickly say move quickly students don't let it dry and then you place it on the paper and it transfers the image this is a fern okay so those are fun things to do it's also fun to use um, natural materials like here's some here's some um, barks and then here's some um, a wasp nest here's charcoal from a fire here's um, this is some uh, dried grass and then here's uh, just smudging using um, a stick with dirt on it you know just smudging and stuff so that you're using you can bring color in onto a page just using all natural materials and of course i've used rubber cement here to attach these to the paper this could be in a journal it could be the journal cover um, okay the um the other thing i do for journal covers is I use um, wallpaper. This well, this is wallpaper. You get those wallpaper samples. Some are very like wood. Some are floral. Here's some examples. You know, and and they're easy to cut if you're going to do. Um, a, a journal that is a little more substantial you can paste those like on this this has a um a poster board and then uh, a cover you can use wallpaper and then on the inside you um can place the another piece of construction paper or something like that so it really becomes more of a book this simple method is only the construction paper. So those are some ideas about how to construct the nature journal. And then for entering the nature journal, logging into it, I always like to talk to them about um, the captain's log. And, it, and the captain's log is always, it's not how many trees you're cutting down, but instead it's keeping track. A journal has to do with the journey. It has to do with the expedition, discovery. And so always you write in the time of day, you know, the day itself, June 11th, 2012. Um, actually a rare sunny day to be out hiking, um, camping. The spring has been unusually wet. You can also use newspapers for getting these handy facts about phases of the moon. You can put what phase the moon is in, or what was the forecast for today, and what did it really turn out to be. Um, you can use longitude and latitude. If you want to be talking about where we are, Yuqua, here, you can incorporate um things about where we are on planet earth what's the longitude and latitude where was the moon what's the precipitation precipitation is to, i know this is backwards but right here precipitation and the temperatures all those things are very interesting when you look back in your journal and these should be seen as the student by the students as something that they will have forever they, they take when they move then put that in your suitcase that's going to go with you all right so newspapers can provide um that kind of information for them to log into and of course 
what it really is like. Is there fog on the landscape? Is it hanging to the to the ridges of the mountains and climbing down uh, like soft cotton or what, you know, and have them encourage them to use metaphors and use analogies to describe what it feels like out there. Um, prior to going out on a field trip, I like to spend time um, giving simple drawing instructions to students. I like to start with things like um, showing them how we can understand something about the structure of a plant through doing, um, what you call it, rubbings. So this is a maple leaf. Maple leaf has a very um, pronounced structure that when you use a rubbing it they stand out and you can see where the the uh, veins in this leaf pattern how it is structured and what i like to use are these i know it's backwards but it these um wax crayons and they're the reason i like them is that they're square uh, and the square shape in them allows, see like that, so you can hold it like this and go across the leaf and you want to hold the leaf in place on the paper and you can do this right into the journal so they can see what that structure is. Then talking about structure, you can say if we were to draw something like this, Oh yes, and you you know you can show them how to draw the things that were in the environment. What what was the bigger plant this leaf came from? Well, it's a it's a maple tree. But from here, you know, you can say, well, is this a straight line here? And then at this point, these other lines: shorter line, longer line, longer line. You know, like that, and then have them try that on another piece of paper. And what, what is the connecting lines like? What are they like? Sometimes I use these. These, um, you know, I, schools sometimes have those, um, uh, what are they called? They're, they're, they cut out patterns. Um, but anyway, you can make these, any shape you want out of, poster board or something a little bit stiffer so it'll hold it up but this allows students to um, take a look through this and orient their subject matter and when they get their subject matter the way they want to then they notice and make notes of where the edges touch the edge of this aperture when they do that, they can draw to scale on their piece of paper what they're seeing based on how this touches the edges and gives them a kind of roadmap to drawing the, the subject. The other thing that I like to have students do, um, and this is kind of, sometimes uh, met with resistance because students have a lot of, well, like we all do, uh, need for perfection. And um, I hate to hear some kids say, I can't draw. Well, it's just not true. So I like to have them um, get a specimen and I bring the specimen in, something simple, that they can easily use their eye and their pencil and do the perimeter, do the outline. And um, then I have them with a piece of paper and a pencil and a no eraser and the specimen. And they look at the specimen and not at their paper for 30 seconds. And they do that a couple of times. And they're just 
you know, oh, freaking out because it's just so, oh my gosh. I just, ah. And instead, I always go to the kid who I can see wasn't, wasn't looking at their paper because you can see a kind of really looking. And it takes a while for the mind and the hand, for the eye and the hand to get coordinated enough to just stay right on that perimeter. So, um, you know, sharing them, they, they can laugh and have a good time, but it really does help them get over the, the problem with being perfect in their drawing. And then, I say, okay, now you can look at your drawing as you're looking at this specimen. So then we do a one minute drawing and um, they take note of where they are when they leave their eye from the specimen and they look at the paper. And then they can go back to the specimen, pick up where they are and go on making changes now here you have an eraser you can change what the what the drawing is like that's one way what i like to also do in the classroom before we go out after we've had some practice drawing and and so on is to uh, introduce them to watercolor pencils and watercolor pencils are really nice because they you know they provide good color on the paper but you also have the opportunity to apply um, water to them when you get back uh, to the classroom or to their home it's also possible to, to you know use um, water from your drinking cup or something to moisten the the paintbrush so that you can apply a little bit of water to the drawing out in the field but i discourage that i think it's better to um i wanted to show you um also it's good to introduce to students while they're still in the classroom working on their journal making and uh, so on to and learning how to draw to use the jewel loops jewel loops are um, here jewel loops uh go like and they can hold into your eye like this and you can look closely at a specimen and you can draw it you'll be using those same techniques that you learn from practicing perimeter drawing or contour drawing when you look through one of these because you're not going to be um you're not going to be looking down at your paper all the time because it's impossible you're going to be just focusing on these um jewel loops they come and you can get them in boxes there's 18 in here and not everybody's going to be using them at once but it would be enough for a, a classroom uh so i have them do that and then another thing that I like to introduce when we're um, in the classroom um, is how, how photo paper works for when we go out to on a field trip and we bring specimens back in to the classroom. Um, we can use photo paper to make photo, photo nature prints. And how do those work? and what's the um, physics behind it. That's a fun thing for them to learn too. I also um, talked to them about the, um, the fun in transferring images. Of course, um, doing the rubbing is a, is a transferring technique, but also 
Um, also, using the um, blender pens. Blender pens um, are a, a tool that infuses um, um, a kind of ether, uh, ink dispelling property onto an image. And I'll show you how they work. They're pretty simple, but you'll want to have the kids use Oh, you know, painter's tape is really a good tape for just tacking. So here's a picture of a little wren. It's photocopied. It's Xerox copied. In other words, it's not photocopied off of my computer because the ink in that won't work as well as a photocopier. So you want to use, you can have a picture uh, from a book that you really like and uh, take it to a printing shop or you know print shop and have it copied and you will always want to remember that of course it's going to have the wording all backwards so you can put tape over that or something so the kids or white it out so the children <clears throat> the student will <clears throat> write the name <clears throat> of this bird or or specimen <clears throat> in their journal but they can use the blender pen to, to replicate this. So if somebody says, I can't draw, it doesn't mean they can't have a nature journal because there's lots of things that you can do that don't, won't require, um, <clears throat> uh, won't require, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm very sorry, drawing. So you cut out the, the little guy put white white over here <clears throat> you know blocking then you place this on your piece of paper and i'm going to put the situation over here so you'll see and right here on the edge of this piece of paper i'm just going to do a little sample because we don't have a lot of time so you put this blender pen over the, I'm just going to do part of this. And then you put the lid back on and you just use a plastic spoon like this. And you just burnish it with that, holding it in place or tap, taping it with that blue painter's tape. So it keeps solid and it doesn't move around. Then you can lift it up, and here is the replicated image. See? So then you can write in what it is, the name of this little bird, and what its habitat is, and why you're interested in it, so on and so forth. Uh oh. Okay. I carry my um, nature journaling stuff in an old suitcase and it's it's you know when I was going from school to school um, I used uh, would I would just carry that into the school I would also like when people came to uh, when I was doing um, artist residencies I also uh, I'm going to turn this around so you can see this. This is my table. And this here is my field station. And the field station is an old box, an old antique box. It's actually a drawing desk. So this comes down like this. And the, and the lid comes like this, so it becomes a little table. And then this folds, whoop, I'm not doing this very, very good to show you. But while I'm out in the, in the field, students can come to 
here and I will have all these little quick um, uh, identification folders that I've picked up over the years so that they can see and the scissors and different kinds of things and of course magnifying lenses and I always like to show students whoa 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 where is this here now I'm going to turn it back where I have more control Susan, it's still facing the other direction. Oh, it is. So just a second. <laughs> okay. There you go. So this is twine. And I like to show students how to make twine because twine can be, you know, you can use it in your in your journal. I also like uh, to show them this lichen, you know, what where what is this? What's its name? Why does it grow? We can paste it in there. I also sometimes like to um, if they've seen a, a, a praying mantis or something but it moves out of their direction and or flies away or something then i have these plastic ones so well this is what it looks like you you, you can drive it from this that kind of a thing oak galls we open oak galls and look inside drawing what we see, asking questions. One of the things that's very important is asking questions. And uh, I keep little things that I find in here, like this moth. And yes, it was dead. I didn't kill it. But look at its patterns on its back. Does it look like leaf? It's just about like a leaf or a seed. What, what are those? these dots here look like eyes this looks like a nose does this look like a little animal to you you know how could you write about that or describe that and i have done this this is a fun thing to do make an accordion book using on this one i used um uh, paper wasp you know actually it was it was a hornet's nest. And um, then this was um, the cattail frond leaf. And I put it over the edge of this little accordion book that folds out like this. And choosing one subject, one specimen, one thing that they can become interested in. So here, on this example, I chose the seed from the maple tree. Maple tree is really kind of nice because it has a simple structure and its seed happens through the wind and they're very obvious. The flowers are obvious, their seeds are obvious, and it, they're, so they're fun to, to um, they're easy to use. Anyway, so this is my first drawing, you know, and I said, we can do a drawing, kind of a detailed drawing, maybe uh, using pen and ink and showing them how to use stippling and cross hatching to show shading that can happen in the classroom. This should be happening in the classroom once we've had some field experience. And then I asked them to think about descriptions all the things that this could remind you of. So I've written an example, fuzzy-eyed bat. Can you see that? Golden tipped wings, flying rabbit ears, monkey in bloomers. I'm gonna have to get my glasses. Um, Fur as thick as thatch, as coarse as a porcupine's back, wings veined like surf drawn beach, wings lined like wind and open heart. So those are the things and little phrases and words that I've used to describe this. So then here's another drawing. This is in color. 
it doesn't need to be the whole thing. It can be part. It can be a blown up example so we can see these little hairs. You know, and when you pick up a maple seed, you can get these little things in your finger and it doesn't feel good. But why, did, why do they have that? So they can stick to the ground. So then I ask them to use their descriptive words and phrases to make a little haiku poem or something like this. And I've introduced them to haiku by having a little, I know this backwards, but it says harvest, haiku harvest. But it, there's examples of haiku poetry, very simple and very helpful for kids when they're, when they're writing poetry. So then I example this, hairy fairy wings lying on the ground, tipped golden as though the sun's burning fingers touched only your edges, leaf light and veined like mermaid's hair in swift green water, you come as a messenger, an opened heart whose secret is held in a sharply furred clasp. What can you tell me with your sleepy eyes closed? So I always encourage the students after they have after they have made their description words and and phrases and then as they begin to write their haiku or their poem i want them to ask a question i want them to think about the specimen and come up with a question um am i over time now i am uh, a couple of minutes yeah so if you could just like a, a, yeah, last little thoughts, and then we're going to do a check in before we start the jump into the next one. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Um, well, um, so well, you know, I think, um, I think we've really pretty much covered everything. Um, but I think that asking questions is one of the best things that help kids engage. Those are their questions. Once they start thinking with that part of their mind that is free and associative, um, they can do that. I also think it's very important for students to know um, and and the, my goodness, there's so many, so many books that um, are good for finding the names of animals and, and insects. You know, I'm out in the field, and kids are are uh, discovering plants they want to draw. Well, here's a plant identification book. We we learn how to find out what the plant is. And there's weed, weed plant identification books too, because they're gonna find more weeds than they are lovely wildflowers, probably. Um, but sometimes the boys in particular, they love to find the, the bugs. So it's always good to have a bug identifying um, book too, so that they can, any student can do that. I, I um, like to have them see um, cards or artwork and have them maybe do this as thank you, but it's using wildflowers and little things they find. This is a good way to decorate on the inside or outside of their journal. And this is a very important book. This is Animal Tracks. So when we're out, particularly, you know, in a moist area next to a stream or creek or something, and they're saying, and they can see, oh, look, what's this? It's a track. Well, we can look it up and we can measure it because here's the little thing. I, on my field station, I have scissors. I have, um, I have a little ruler so that they can measure. And when they're writing in their journal, about what this is and, and what and drawing it and so on, they can include um, the measurements, the exact measurements. Okay, I'm almost finished, but I just want to show you 
Audubon is always good to show. And sometimes you can come across Audubon's and you can talk about his importance as, a, as an, art, an artist of, of the natural world. Often when you find, especially these ash leaves, they're very good because they decompose. Sometimes just the matter falls out between these finely meshed grains. Of, of, and, the, and I've, with rubber cement, it works best. Uh, put them in the, in the journal. Always labeling their common name and their scientific name. And it's good to know that many of the names, like the Iris Douglas de Glaciana, that's named for David Douglas. Who's David Douglas? That botanist who came to the Northwest and told us so much about what was here um, long, long ago. So I'm, I'm going to quit for now. And I don't know if there's any questions, if you do that, or if I just say adios. Um, well, would you like to share your, if you'd, if you'd like to share your contact information or your email, if somebody wants to like get a hold of you? Um, oh, sure, sure. That. Okay, so on, the, on your paper there, where you have space I've left for you, you can write um, Susan Applegate, um, 541. 391-1285 is my phone number. I don't just hand it out to anybody. And my uh, email is susapple54 at gmail.com. You're awesome. amazing, Susan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, you for, for doing, doing this. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Such an inspiration. We just we just love you to pieces. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Yeah, and if you have never checked out uh, Susan's artwork or website, um, I was looking on there and was very impressed. And she's done murals, and I think you illustrated for a book or something too. So several lots of different types of things. <laughs> um, so, so I guess in your in your pack you have a. Uh, I know this is backwards, but. There's a, an example of a nature journal residency, and you know this is early grades, but it kind of breaks down what you can do each day with these kids. I thought that was helpful, and of course, if you're in uh, middle school or high school, you can um, you have different problems in high school. You have different challenges, um, but I think incremental is how you work incremental always building on what was 